Hello, welcome to another episode of Cracking the Cryptic and a puzzle by Rat Finks today. Not to be confused with Finks the Rat, who is taking part in Marty Sears' um, series of rat run um, puzzles that Simon has been doing. I think even before they started, we featured this Rat Finks before on the channel back in the back end of last year. Um, and Rat Finks probably thinks Finks the Rat has stolen their name. I don't know. Anyway, uh, hasn't said anything bitter about that in the email. But um, we have a puzzle with some... Well, it's got modifier cells, so don't just be looking at these killer cages and thinking you know what's going on. You don't till you read the rules. We'll check that out in a minute. Now, don't forget that... Our newest app is out, Cracking the Cryptic's Approachable Sudoku, and uh, you can get that either through the current Cracking the Cryptic app, if you have that on Apple or Android, that is Google Play or iOS, but if you want it on Steam, there is a separate um, URL which is in the description field, and we recommend all of our apps very highly. There is a killer Sudoku app, which is excellent, um, and many others. Now, what else have we got? We've got uh, all of our merchandise. I've got this lovely Cracking the Cryptic mug for you. Mm -hmm. And we've got Sven Sudoku Pad and Patreon, of course, which features a new hunt every first of the month. And we recommend those very highly. They're always most entertaining. Sudoku, multiple solves. Uh, you can enter a competition until the 20th. Do check them out. Patreon is a great place to go for all kinds of content. We have crossword videos. We have um, extra puzzles, um, free packs sometimes or other packs and uh, loads of content. We'd love you to engage with us there. And of course, do engage with us by trying this puzzle by Ratfink. So I'm going to go through the rules now. It's called With Friends Like This. Um, presumably who needs enemies completes that thought and the rules are as follows normal sudoku rules apply one to nine will go in every row every column and every three by three box digits in cages cannot repeat and sum to the total shown um that looks impossible at the moment for this cage digits in cages may never border a consecutive digit in the same cage. So these two couldn't be one and two or seven and six. There is one negator in every row, column and box. If negators appear in a cage, they subtract their value from the sum of the other digits in the cage. So a negator acts as a minus number of its size. Negators are a set of the digits one to nine with no repeats. So there's one in every row, column and box. Let me just try and find one possible disposition of those so that we can see how that would work. That would be one in every row, column and box. They could be the digits one to nine and they would all have negative values for the cages, not in terms of the consecutives. That came before that rule. So for considering those consecutive digits, this pair couldn't be one next to minus two. Even though the values of those would not be consecutive, the digits would be, and they're not allowed to be. Each diamond, I think this is the last rule, is a friendly square. Friendly cells are cells which match either their row number or their column number in this, in this example, in this puzzle. Sometimes friendly cells can include the box number or the position number. That is not relevant. It's only row number and column number in this puzzle. Digits may never repeat in friendly cells, but not all digits need appear as a friendly cell. Okay, those are the rules. Give it a try. Um, intriguing puzzle. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. Okay, so... Well, I'm going to mark up the friendly cells first of all. That's row one, column three. This is row two, column three. Row three, column six. Row four, column six. Row five, column five. Row six, column four. And row eight, column five. So 
Never mind about the four, six pair for a moment. We've got a five. That must be a digit. And, ah, these are all in the same cage. Actually, the cage's total is 45. I started to believe that cages would always not have a 45 total um, when they were nine cells big. But this one is nine cells big and has a value of 45. Oh, but the four six pair means this is a three. Digits can't repeat in a cage. And the rule said that consecutive digits can't be next to each other in a cage. So this is a six and this is a four. I'm not thinking about negators at the moment. What I am sort of thinking is that this cage has no negators in, but that's not necessarily true. There was nothing in the rules either to say that a cage might have no negators, even if it was nine cells, but there was nothing in the rules to say that a cage couldn't have two negators. Oh, however, it is necessarily true that this one has none. And the reason for that is it must contain the nine separate digits, one to nine. They would all add up to 45 if there were no negators amongst them. And that must be the case. If any of them negated, the value would not reach 45, as it doesn't in the 39 and 37 cages. So there is no negator in this, in this um, cage. And therefore, the negator in box five is in one of these two cells. Now, there's something else, actually. Where does three go in, in this box? Three isn't allowed in the cage again, and it can't go there. So it definitely goes here. I am tempted. The way I think these cages work... Now, I, I haven't shared with you, although it was obvious, actually, from the way that I knew that this cage would add up to 45 if there were no negators, that the secret to Sudoku often is knowing that the digits 1 to 9 add up to 45. So that's the total of... It's the total of every row, column, and box. It's also in this puzzle the total of the digits in every nine cell cage. Oh, hang on, there was a rule at the end. Digits may never repeat in friendly cells. So this is not a three. Actually, it's not a three in the cage, but it's also not a three because there's a three in the friendly cell. But this is also not a three, and this one is not a five. So we've filled in our friendly cells. That's surprising. They're often, well, maybe not. Maybe they're early to be done in puzzles. Now, what I was going to talk about is the difference between 45, the total of the digits 1 to 9, and 39, which is the sum of this cage. Now, the difference between them is 6. And I think when you're negating a digit, you double its value to show the effect on a total of doing that. So if I was subtracting three, if I, if I was making the negator in a set of digits one to nine, the three, I would subtract that total from 45 and subtract it again, subtract it once because it's not positive and subtract it again because it is negative. So it looks straight away as though the three is the negator but remember that there could be two negators in a cage and they could be two and one and that would have the same effect. So I am not colouring that cell as a negator yet. I am bearing in mind that this might be one and there might be a negating one in one of those cells, well, one of those cells as well. And the same with this 37 cage, it's either got a negative 4 to give the 8 difference between 37 and 45, or a negative 1 and 3. Ah, it doesn't have a negative 1 and 3. Because that would leave nothing that the 39 cage could have as its negators available. This, this cage either has 1 and 2, or just three as its negators. If this cage had one and three as its negators, you couldn't do either of those combos here. So this has a negative four as its negator. And since we've got a four there, 
the negative digit in this cage does not appear in those cells. Now there is only one cell left in box three. And if you immediately did 45 minus 39 is three and made that negative, then give yourself a very slight demerit because you didn't think it all through. <laughs> Don't really. Anyway, those are all green because this is a neg negative cell and there's only one per row, column and box. Now, this pair, right, got to keep in mind this non-consecutive within a cage rule. This pair can't be a 4-5 pair and it adding up to 9 because they would be consecutive and touching. Oh, much better, right. Okay, let's just finish off here. This is either 1-8 or 2-7. I don't know which. This 8 cage is 1-2-5 because 3 and 4 have appeared in the column. It's all green. They're all genuine digits. But 1 and 2 must not touch each other by the rule. So 5 is their chaperone in the middle. This is 7, 8, or 9. Now, we might, there's, there's probably a lot of ways we can use this non-consecutive rule. Oh, that digit must appear there in box 5. So they're the same. Uh, yellow is not a good indicator. Let's try orange. Um, it's 4 that negates in this cage, not 8. This cage is not... Ah, no, it's not genuine. It can't have one and two in it. Not just because of this cage, but because they'd be touching each other. So there's a, there's a negator in that cage, a red digit somewhere there. Those two are green because they're in the same box. Those three are green because they're in the same row. Three is the only negator in this cage. These are all green. Three is in one of those cells. Five is in one of these two. This seven cage could have a negator. So it's not necessarily one six. It can't be three four as a genuine cage or five two. It could be one six. If it has a negator, then it's either eight minus one, so an eight one pair, or nine minus two. Is that worth marking up? Maybe not. Two, nine. Okay, I've done it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to consider. Right, this is now not a genuine cage because it can't have one, two, and four in it. Therefore, there is a negator in this cage, and therefore, these other two cells in the box are green. They're genuine. Um... One in this cage is either there or it's in one of these two cells, in which case this has to be a 9-2 pair. Don't know yet. Now, I was going to think about this more. We've got 1, 2, 7... Oh, this digit sees 3, 4, 5, 6 in the cage, 1, 2, 8 in the box. That is 7 or 9. Uh, 7 or 9. And that also sits here. And that mustn't sit next to eight. Oh no, it's not within the cage. Ah, oh, you've got to be careful. I've got to be careful. Sorry, this is in a different cage. This one is in the same cage as this cell. This can't be eight. That can't be eight by Sudoku. Eight is definitely in one of these two cells. If it was here, that, that knocks out one eight as a possibility, that's all. Um, these are from six, seven, eight, nine. These can't be, ooh. So we've got four and four still to place somewhere in the box. There's no non-consecutive rule because it's not in a cage. Um, uh, oh, unless that's a one six pair. Oh, what is this pair? that's got a three difference between the digits, that's using a negative that can't be a three. Right, this could be one four, 
with the 1 being negative. It can't be 2, 5. It can't be 3, 6 because we've had the negative 3. It could be 4, 7. It can't be 5, 8. It could be 6, 9. So it's 1, 4 or 4, 7 or 6, 9. Here's a thought about this cage. If this was a genuine cage, it would contain 1, 2, 3 and 4. However, what would 2... What digit would sit here? And wouldn't it be next to a consecutive digit? It would be next to all of the other digits in the cage. So it would be next to a consecutive digit. So this is not a genuine cage. It has a negator in it. That means these other cells in the box are not are genuine, and that means there's only one cell left for a negator in column three. That's all right as a deduction. I'm happy with that. Now these don't contain a one. The one in this oh for yes, it can't be. This one sees all of those by normal Sudoku rules. So the one in this cage is definitely here. That means either this is a one or this is a one, two pair. And this is now not a one, eight pair. This is a two, seven pair. Now this is not a seven, four pair. So it's either one, four or six, nine. This digit is eight or nine by Sudoku. That is forming, no, this could be a 1-6 pair, bother. Um, this is a 7-8-9 triple, so this is a 1-2 pair. And they're, they're, we're freed from any more worry about consecutive digits in, in this cage, in this 45 cage. Um, but we've still got lots of consecutive digits to worry about elsewhere, I'm delighted to say. I think 10 total isn't very appealing for doing sums on. Actually, is the 7? Okay, in this... Here's a thought. In this box, 1 and 2 are not the negator digit, because they're in genuine cells. 3 is not, because we've had 3 as the negator digit. So the negator digit in this cage is either 4 or more. If it's 4, the other two digits add up to 11. They're 6, 5 or 3, 8. If it's 5, the other two digits add up to 12. They could be 4, 8 or 3, 9. I don't think this is a profitable line of... Oh, hang on. I've just discovered that 3 is in this cage. Look at that 3. That sees all of those cells. And this cage already has a 3 in it. So there is a 3 in this cage. It's not the negator, because we've had the 3 negator. Right, there's a genuine 3 in this cage, and the other digits have a difference of 4, I think. To make the 7 total work. And they're not 1, 5, 2, 6, or 3, 7. The other digits are either 4, 8, or 5, 9. That must be right, mustn't it? This is either a 348 or a 359 cage. And the negator in the 348 cage would be the 4. And the negator in the 359 cage, I have to do the maths, would be the 5. So we've either got a 4 or a 5 negator up here. If it was 359, the rule about non-consecutive doesn't matter. Well, it might then matter in the rest of the K, in the rest of the box, where we'd have to put 4, 6, 7, and 8. And that would make this a 5, not being allowed to be next to 4 or 6. I think it works. If it was 3, 4, 8, eight with four as the negator the eight would have to sit separate chaperoning the three and four 
then the rest of the box would be five, six, seven, nine, and this would be a four. So this is either four or five, depending on which one is in the cage. Okay, well, that, oh, it's not four because it's next to a three in, in the cage. That's the rule. So there is a five in this cage. It is three, five, nine. The negator is the five. So I'm putting that in the corner now. I'm going to get rid of, well, there is a five pencil marked here. And that means one of these three cells is a five because that's the only place it can go in, in the row. But I was planning to not... I'm planning to keep the corner marks now, from now on, for where the negate, for what the negators are. So in this box, it's either one or four. No, it's not. It's either one or six that is the negator. We've had the three. This one, since we've had the three, this is a high digit, six, seven, eight, or nine. Up here, we've got the five as a negator. And I want to keep track of these. In fact, this is now a 3-6 pair. That's been available for ages. I hadn't noticed it. This is a 4-5 pair. No. 1-2-5-3-6. No, it's from 4-7-9. But that's in the cage next to 8. So it can't be 7 or 9. That's a 4. 4 is not... No, 4 is. 4 is the funky digit in this cage. It can't be 1 and 3 anymore because of that. Yes, okay, so it's, there's only 1 in this cage. And it's there. And we've got a 7-9 pair. These are from 1, 2, 5. They're somewhat limited by the 1 and the 2. Ooh, and there's a 1 or a 2 in this cage and a 1 or a 2 in this pair. In fact, this is the only place for 4 in the box. And that is a genuine digit because we've had the negator 4. In fact, these are non-negators. Since we got the four, I'd forgotten we can green a lot of cells that aren't negative, including that one. And now there is a negative digit in this cage, and therefore it's not a 1-6 cage. It's either 1-8 or 2-9. Wow. One, two, three, five, nine. These digits are four, six, eight, and seven. Four must be in the cage, so it's not there. That is not allowed to be four or six being next to five. And then I'm gonna say that neither of these can be seven or eight, because if they were, they'd be next to the other of those digits. Which is a surprising chunk to be able to take out. Um, but I think it's right. Two, seven, one, three, five, three, six, two, seven. These digits are from four, eight, nine in the row. I should keep focusing up here. If that was seven, this is nine. Then that couldn't be eight. That would be eight. This, this non-consecutive rule is quite confusing, actually. And should I think about the 14th? Yeah, I mean, I love the fact there are so many ways to make progress in this puzzle. It's really interesting. But I haven't got very far for a bit. Now, OK, I haven't thought about this cage, which has got 4-8 in it. OK, the 2 in the s or the two in this cage is not in those cells. It's in one of these. That's an X-wing on 2s which means that two in box three is in one of those two cells. I would love to say the same for the seven, but since that could be the seven, I can't. I still don't want to think about the total of the 10 cage. It seems too fluid to me. Oh, one is, of course, in one of these cells. I think I've known that for ages. We haven't definitely had one as a negator yet. Four, eight, five. I'm sure there's something very obvious for me to be doing now. I don't know what it is though. Six, nine pair would make that seven or eight. That is, oh look, that's a one, two, eight, nine quad. So these are definitely sevens. 
in the orange. Um, that's not a seven. Right, here's a little thought. That's eight or nine. This can't be from eight or nine as well, or that would be a six, seven pair in a cage. So that's six or seven, but that is allowed to, to touch a consecutive digit through a cage boundary. This pair is either, well, it's the counterpart of this pair, which is either one eight or two nine. So this pair is also either one eight or two nine. And now this pair is also either one eight or two nine. And that doesn't help resolve this one, I don't think. It will use the second one or nine between those cells. So none of these can be nine. It's not that helpful. Actually, seven is in one of those cells. Probably not very helpful either. Am I missing something here? Might be. Don't know what, though. Okay, let's think about this cage again. Five is not allowed to be next to four, and it's not in those cells. So five's in one of these three. I'm not going to pencil mark that. It would confuse me. Okay, let's think about the ten sum now. The trouble is we've got loads of possible negators. Oh, that can't be a seven anymore. I hadn't noticed that. Okay, no, let's think about this cage. Right, let's think about that, because that's a bit easier to think about. If there was a negator in it, it could be one, it couldn't be two because of the position here. It could be one, it couldn't be five, apparently. So if there's a negator in it, it can't be six, because then the other two cells would have to add up to 20. So if there's a negator in it, it's a 1, and the other two cells add up to 15, and that has become a 5, and this is 8 or 9. The two cells that add up to 15 are from 6, 7, 8, 9, so are those two. And that would be 3, and that would be 4. That would be how this has to work. If this has a negator in it, the negator is a 1, that's a 3, and this is a 4. If there's no negator in it, well, first of all, if there was no one, then we're looking at either, we're definitely looking at three, four, seven, because we're not allowed to use two and five. If it had a one, the other pair add up to 13, that's slightly more open. So I'm gonna look at this three, four, seven idea. Oh, uh, but three, four, seven with no negator. I don't know. I'm I'm getting confused now. I don't think maybe this is the right way to go. Sorry. Lots of brain power expended on that, and no actual progress. Oh, am I missing something, Blake? Come on, Mark, what are you missing? There don't seem to be many places to go in the puzzle at the moment. Okay, so if there was a negator, we said it's a one. The, ah, the negator here becomes a five. Ah, okay, so if there is a negator here, the five negator is in one of those cells, and this becomes a two, and this must be... eight and one and if the negator is here that's not the negator so it's eight then the pair of digits that add to 15 if there is a negator here are six nine one six nine five eight seven 
two, four, three. That won't work, but it's quite complicated because if that's seven, ah, here's why this is never seven, quite interestingly, because it makes that eight. And then whether this is six touching a seven or nine touching an eight, it's impossible. So that's never seven. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Hadn't considered that. So the only place for seven in this box is now there. That's quite interesting in its own right. Um, these are not allowed to be eight or nine, so they include a six, eight and nine. They break that, but they're also consecutive. So they include a six, and that's not a six. That's a four now. Now there is a four in this cage. So there is no negator in it, because the only possible negator was going to be a one. And that won't work. So... This is a genuine all green cage, including a four and two digits that add up to 10 that are not four, six or two, eight. They're either three, seven or one, nine. Now, if it's four, one, nine, we go five, eight, not the negator. Yeah, okay, that's nice. If it's four, one, nine, that can't be the negator because it's not one, and that can't be the negator because it's not five now, because that's become five. So it's not 419, it's 437, genuine. That's not seven, that's not three. 437, genuine. Oh, seven has to chaperone three and four, which are on its outsides. That's giving us seven, two down there. That's restricting two to one of two places here. Um, interestingly, one and three are not allowed into those cells now, but never mind about that. Let's come back up here where we're actually getting something done. Seven is in one of those two cells. Oh, this is a six, eight, nine triple in the cage. So that's seven. Seven's not allowed to be next to six. So that's nine. That can't be next to eight. That this non-consecutive rule within the cages is so super powerful. It's very surprising. That's not eight, so that's not one. I still don't know which of these is the negator. It's either a five there or a one there, which is forming a one five pair. I see, I still don't know. But anyway, that's an eight. This is a six. Let's do that. Six, four, seven, nine, three. I, st I don't know that I can actually resolve the rest of this. Yes, I can. Nine there makes that a one. I certainly can, just by Sudoku. So, eight is non-negator. That is now the negator in this row. That is not. And that's good, because it's a nine, which couldn't be. So that's green. This is a three-five pair, in which the five is the negator. This is a six-eight-nine triple, in which there is no negator. And this is a, oh, we've had the negative one. Ah, this is a one, two, five triple. And we've had the negative one, and we know the negative five's there. So this involves the negative two, which is not there. It's in one of these two cells. And the fact that we've had the negative one means this is not a one, four pair. This is a six, nine pair with the negative six. So we've had the negative one, two, three, four, five and six. This is either eight or nine. We've got seven, eight and nine as negatives to achieve in the bottom, well, in boxes four, seven and nine. And, 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 and. Well, not much else. Um, that's not a nine. This box? No. Why can't it be more helpful? Once you get out of a cage which has all the non-consecutive constraints, things get a little bit trickier, it would seem. Okay, two was in one of those cells, not with one or three. So one and three have to be somewhere amongst these. Oh, there is a nine in one of those cells, so this is eight. And that's nine, and that's not. Um, that's a one, so we get two and one there. Eight, five, one, six, nine, seven. This is three or four by Sudoku, which is a pair with that cell. 
and one and five are in this row. Can't really use that. These are from two, three, four, seven. That one can't be two or seven. Next one can't be four. Nine, three, five. I haven't got the rule to help. This is a three, so oh, this digit is known. It's a nine now. Um, oh, there's a nine negator to be found somewhere, which now can't be here or here. If the nine negator is in one of those cells, the other three, well, it's got to be there. And then the other three jobbies in this cage would add up to 19. Uh, without using an eight, that's impossible. Look, eight is looking at all of this cage. There is no eight in this cage. If it had a negator nine, the other maximum digits would be seven, six, five. You couldn't get up to the total of 10. The negator nine is not in this cage. It's either there or here. Um, there's a two in one of those cells, so that is not the negator two, bingo. This is an ordinary one or five in green. This is the negator two. And now these aren't negators, actually, nor is that. This is therefore the nine. This is the negator six for this cage value to be right. That's not nine, that's not six. Now the, the negator nine, we've worked out it's not in this cage, so it's in this cell. We've got a negator seven and eight. The seven is not there. Look where the sevens are up here. So that has the negator eight in, and the negator seven is not in this cell. In fact, that is the negator eight. Sorry, that's very clear. Wow, and the seven is in one of these two. And the other three cells in this cage add up to 17, and they don't use an eight. So they must use a nine in one of these two. And they must use two cells that add up to eight. Oh, lots of options for that. Hmm, okay, weird. No, hang on, I like this. This can't be a seven because this cell sees six and eight and the white dot says no. So that's not seven. This is the negator seven. And we've now got all our negators and all our non-negators. And this one is the non-negating three up there. This is the five in the corner. This is, well, I don't know, but that's now nine. There's a nine in one of those two cells. It's not allowed to be next to the eight in the cage, so we've found it. That's eight, six, nine up the top. I think all the nines are done in the puzzle. Six is now in one of those two cells along with two. These are one, three, five to complete the cage. Yeah. Um, now, these two cells add up to eight. They're not a six, two pair because one of them would touch, one of the, the six would touch the seven. They're not a one seven pair because we've had a seven. So they're a five three pair with five there, three here. We know where the one is based now in this box and that's a two by Sudoku now. This is a four six eight triple. I can write in the eight but not the six four pair. That's a three. Didn't I have a four three pair? I did, I'm sorting it out now in column seven. Four there, eight there. This is from one three five. Then we've got a six, eight pair over here. That's a four. These two cells are two and seven. We must even know the order. Two, seven, like that. This two, one pair's disambiguated. I think we're just unwinding now. Oh, look, six mustn't be next to five in this cage. So I'm gonna put the five there. That's gonna sort out one five at the top. This is a one, that's a three, this is a three in the cage, five in the row. In the column we need one seven, in the box we need four, three six pair, and a four six pair. That is a good puzzle wrap, thanks. Very entertaining. Well, with 
with enemies to struggle with like that, we know you are one of our friends, Rat Fiends. Excellent. Quite pleased with 35 minutes for a puzzle with quite a bit of complexity in it there. Just checking that the negators are all the right set of digits in the right rows and columns. It looks good. I think that, well, I mean, we were told it was the solution. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching on Cracking the Cryptic. Well done if you got that puzzle done on your own. That is a significant mark to you. Um, and we will be back with more tomorrow. Bye for now.